Chapter 25 of Parables from Nature. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joyce Martin. Parables from Nature by Margaret Gaddy. Chapter 25 Night and Day. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Revelation 21, verse 23. In old times, long, long ago, when night and day were young and foolish, and had not discovered how necessary they were to each other's happiness and well-being, they chased each other round the world in a state of angry disdain, each thinking that he alone was doing good, and that therefore the other, so totally unlike himself in all respects, must be doing harm, and ought to be got rid of, altogether if possible. Old northern tales say they rode, each of them in a car with a horse to it, but the horse of night had a frosty mane, while that of day had a shiny one. Moreover, foam fell from Frosty Mane's bit as he went along, which dropped on the earth as dew, and Shiny Mane's mane was so radiant that it scattered light through the air at every step, and thus they drove on, bringing darkness and light over the earth in turn, each pursuing and pursued, but knowing so little of this simple fact that one of their chief causes of dispute was, which was going first? For, of course, if they had been able to settle that, it would have been known which was the more important of the two. But as they drove in a circle, the point could not be decided, since what was first on one side was sure to be last on the other, as anybody may see who tries to draw their journey. They never gave this a thought, however, and there was no schoolmasters about just then to teach them. So round and round the world they went, without even knowing that it was round, still less that there is no such thing as first and last in a circle. And they never succeeded in overtaking so as to pass each other, though they sometimes came up very close, and then there was twilight. Of the two, one grumbled, and the other scolded the most, and it is easy to guess which did which. Night was gloomy by nature, especially when clouds hid the moon and stars, so her complaints took a serious, melancholy tone. She was really broken-hearted at the exhaustion produced all over the world by the labors and pleasures which were carried on under the light of day, and used to receive the earth back as if it was a sick child and she a nurse, who had a right to be angry with what had been done to it. Day, on the contrary, was amazingly cheerful, particularly when the sun shone, never troubled his head about what was to happen when his fun was over, on the contrary, thought his fun ought to last for ever, because it was pleasant, was quite vexed when it was put a stop to, and had no scruple in railing at his rival, whose only object, as it seemed to him, was to overshadow and put an end to all the happiness that was to be found. "'Cruel knight!' he exclaimed. "'What a life you lead me! "'How you thwart me at every turn! "'What trouble I have to take to keep your mischief in check! "'Look at the mists and shadows I must drive on one side "'before I can make the world bright with my beautiful light. "'And no sooner have I done so than I feel your cold, unwholesome breath "'trying to come up to me behind. "'But you shall never overtake me if I can help it, "'though I know that is what you want.' You want to throw your hateful black shadow over my bright and pleasant world. I doing mischief, which you have to keep in check, groaned Knight, quite confused by the accusation. I, whose whole time is spent in trying to repair the mischief other people do. Your mischief, in fact, you wasteful consumer of life and power. Every twelve hours I get back from you a half-worn-out world. And this I am expected to restore and make as good as new again. "'But how is that possible? "'Something I can do, I know, "'some wear and tear I can renew and refresh, "'but some, alas, I cannot, "'and thus creep in destruction and death.' "'Here, here,' cried Day in contempt, "'taunting me with the damage I do "'and the death and destruction I cause. "'I, the life-giver, 
at whose touch the whole world awakes which else might lie asleep for ever she the grim likeness of death she talks about and bringing death's twin sister in her bosom you are day the destroyer i night the restorer persisted night evading the argument i am day the life-giver you night the desolator replied the day bitterly i am night the restorer you day the destroyer repeated night you are to me what death is to life shouted day then death is a restorer as i am exclaimed the knight and so they went on like all other ignorant and obstinate arguers each full of his own one idea and taking no heed of what the other might say how could the truth be got by such means of course it could not and of course therefore they persisted in their rudeness and there were certain seasons particularly when they became more impertinent to each other than ever for instance whenever it was summer day's horse shiny mane got so strong and frisky that night had much ado to keep her place at all so closely was she pressed in the chase indeed sometimes there was so little of her to be seen that people might have doubted whether she had passed by at all had it not been for the dew frosty mane scattered and which those saw who got up early enough in the morning oh the boasting of day at these times and really he believed what he said he really thought it would be the greatest possible blessing if he were to go on for ever and there were to be no night perhaps he had the excuse of having heard a whisper of some old tradition to that effect but the principal cause of the mistake was that he thought too much about himself and too little about his neighbor fortunate world cried he it must be clear to every one now who it is that brings blessing and does good to you and your inhabitants good old earth you become more and more lovely and fruitful the more and more i shorten the hours of night and lengthen my own we can do tolerably well without her restoring power it would seem if we could be rid of her altogether, therefore, what a paradise there would be! Then the foliage, the flowers, the fruit, the precious crops of this my special season would last for ever. Would that it could remain uninterrupted! He is praying for a curse. Were it granted, no life could exist, murmured the knight, and Frosty Mane's dew fell in tears as she spoke. No one heard her, however, but the dew was very acceptable for the weather was very hot. And she had her revenge, for when it was summer on one side of the globe, it was winter on the other, and then it was her turn to boast, as it was in winter that Frosty Man came out in all his glory, every now and then running his car so nearly side by side with that of day, that he squeezed him up into the smallest possible compass, besides putting out half his light on which night kept up a sort of murmuring triumph good good very good this is something like rest at last now worn-out nature is recruiting herself to some purpose now weary muscles may gather strength instead of giving it out now strained eyes may recover brightness and worn brains energy now all the secret forces of nature are at work and exhaustion is being repaired on every side now trees and plants may keep their gases for themselves, and earth hold her own. Now waste and consumption cease, for the wear and tear of life have stopped. Ah, oh, if it could but cease for ever, then the world would be renewed indeed, and giant races of man and beast and plant arise. But never glow with the light of active life, or be seen but in the pale, unmeaning moonlight sneered the mortified day but he struggled in vain to make himself heard the truth is he was in the background just then and nobody cared to listen yet he made his presence known from time to time at midday by the light of shiny mane's hair nothing could quite put that out even in winter when the weather was fine and sometimes it shone over the ice and snow so brightly that they glittered like diamonds, or might almost have been taken for fireworks. And so things went on, till a check came, and it came, in a very odd way. It is not always very easy to tell the exact causes of change, even in one's own mind, much less in other people's, so I do not pretend to trace the whole process out in this case. 
but night and day did grow wiser as time went on for as every one knows there is no squabbling or boasting going on between them now on the contrary they glide after each other as gently and sweetly as possible without any kicking of horses or rumbling of chariot wheels and one may conclude that after the first flush of feeling cooled down they were better able to look round them and judge dispassionately of each other and lo and behold they discovered at last that there were just two portions of the globe where each had in turn his own way as nearly as possible for six whole months at a time for example at the poles and that yet nevertheless the brilliant consequences which they had insisted would occur under these circumstances never took place on the contrary those were the dreariest and most desolate portions of the whole globe barren wastes of ice and rock where both animal and vegetable life were at the lowest possible ebb nothing could be more mortifying it must be owned in vain did shiny mane drive round and round that frozen horizon with a light that was never interrupted where was the promised paradise which was to follow the foliage the flowers the fruit the precious crops which should have adorned this unchecked rain of day where were they the dove would have sought in vain here for even a shrub on which to rest her foot scarcely a wandering seagull ever disturbed the death-like stillness of the air day the life-giver looked down upon a kingdom without life what wonder if he began at last to distrust himself what wonder if he went on to suspect that there might be some truth in what knight had said after all that she might in some way or other be knight the restorer in some way however mysterious and unaccountable be necessary to his own prosperity and it was the same with night when her turn came round in vain did frosty mane distill his dews they were useful at least night thought so everywhere else but here what did they avail here was the unbroken rest which was to recruit and refresh all nature now her secret powers might work as they pleased there was no waste of power now either from labor or heat or any other destructive cause but where were the giant races of man and beast and plant that were to arise in consequence the wear and tear of life had stopped but what was the earth advantaged night the restorer ruled but over a kingdom where there was nothing to restore well might tears mingle with her dews well might she call to the morning stars to bring back that day whom once she had dreaded as a rival but now longed for as a friend day the life-giver he had called himself and day the life-giver perhaps he was certainly without him she could do nothing at any rate here where he was not the whole world was a blank they had made a terrible mistake that was clear and if they did not at first see that there must be other and more important powers at work besides theirs or the good old earth would not be what it is in most places they must be excused people cannot grow quite wise all at once and they had made a very good beginning by learning to distrust themselves that being always the first step toward doing justice to a neighbor i called you day the destroyer bright and beautiful friend murmured night in her softest tones you who bring light over my shadows and make my good deeds known to all men day the life-giver forgive me and return at the seasons appointed touch the earth with your glory from time to time lest all things perish from its face and it and i are forgotten together but i mistook your friendly shadow for that of death answered day with his sweetest smile though tears trembled in his eyes as he thought of the injustice causing the brightest of rainbows to span the landscape below and that was a thousand times worse you in whose silence and rest the very fountains of life are renewed ah while earth remains what it is an everlasting day a day without night would be destruction dear friend forgive me ever and ever return there is nothing to forgive whispered night as she came round once more and death also may restore as i do added she tenderly 
for the harvest moon was shining upon long fields of golden corn, some waving still, some gathered into sheaves, and she felt particularly hopeful about everything. "'Anyhow, we are friends, loving, helpful friends,' sang Day. "'Friends, comforting and abiding friends,' echoed Night in return, as the weary world sank on her bosom, eyes closing, limbs relaxing, and flowers folding as if the angel of rest had come down from heaven. And friends they were, and remain, though long ages have passed away since the time the old northern tales tell of, and though now the wise men will not allow that night and day drive round the world in cars with horses to them. Well, perhaps they don't. Perhaps it is really true that the earth is a dark ball hanging in the open space which we call the firmament of heaven, moving slowly round the shining sun, but spinning like a top all the time itself, so that first one side and then the other faces the brightness, and thus there is a constant change from light to darkness and darkness to light going on all over the world, and this makes day and night. But no matter which way the changes come, night and day are the work of the Lord, and like all the other works of the Lord, which the three children in the fiery furnace called upon to praise him, have a voice, and say many things worth listening to, especially now that they are no longer young and foolish. And from time to time, according as we keep our ears open or shut, little streams of melody do float round us from the natural world, as musical sounds break out from the strings of an old-fashioned Olean harp, when the wind blows over it, or sweep along the wires of the electric telegraph on breezy days. Listen only, and you will hear, and which speaks you can surely guess, for they praise each other now and not themselves. One sings, Dear night, whom once I dreaded as the dark end of life and enjoyment, dear night, whom now I know as the forerunner of life renewed, welcome, blessed restorer, Take our worn-out child to your bosom. Drop over her striving and straining your mantle of repose. All her day laborers grow weary, for a portion of life goes from them, in the toil of limb and muscle, in the working of eye and brain, in all the changes that circle round an ever-changing world. Restore what thou canst and mayest. Let the rest remain in hope, for the mercy thou bringeth now foreshadows a greater in store. O oh, type of the mighty change which must one day pass upon all, of the deep, mysterious rest in which all things shall be renewed, of the needful, hopeful death which quickens unto life. Dear night, my sister and friend, the twilight shades approach, and I see in thankful peace your darker shadows beyond. And the other answers in turn, Dark and secret my mission, men call me night the gloomy, but hold in my bosom the germs of a glory full of hope, hiddenly working within, till thou the life-giver returnest to break through the mists and shadows and touch my nurslings with light. So at the first creation, at the touch of the first young dawn, lo, gleams of life universal were lit all over the world, and nature, amazed, awoke in songs of thanksgiving and joy. So come, then, day, the life-giver, ever and ever reviving the slumbering germs I nourish, the hidden life I feel. Welcome for this, but thrice welcome as type of a day-spring eternal that shall dawn at last on the night of sin and sorrow and death, when, on our secret missions accomplished, our secret workings completed, thou and I, O oh, life-giving day, shall merge our blessings in one when the light that never wastes and the life that never wearies shall be one with the rest eternal that remaineth evermore. End of chapter 25 Recording by Joyce Martin